morning. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you can, please stand up with us as we usher in the presence of God. I truly believe he's already in the room. How about you? Is he in the room? He's in the room. Thank you, God. Of the king, 
how many of you came to praise God this morning? You know, I heard it said somewhere that in order for blessings to fall down, you have to give praise unto God. So if you didn't come with a joyful heart to praise God this morning, how do you expect to get a blessing from Him? How many of you came for a blessing this morning? We're going to slow things down a little bit and let the presence of God fill this room. Open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain. Open the floodgates. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. We need to open up our heart in order to let God in. You know, it's not just about praying, but it's about what you're doing. As I look around the room and see all these people whose lives have been lost because people don't understand that God loves us just the way we are. We need to open up the hearts of our own before we can share something with somebody else. You can't have a closed heart and want God to bless you. It's not going to happen. But you also need to help your brother and your sister. They're crying outside these walls. We need to reach out and open the floodgates of heaven so that they can see that God loves us just the way we are. I am not strange. I am not different. And my blood is red like yours. We need to open up our hearts and just be the word of God. Be Jesus with skin on. Help us sing this one more time.
God's given us a name that we can call on anytime we need help and strength. When we need anything at all, all we have to do is say the word Jesus. Join me in prayer. Indeed, there is something about that name. The Apostle Paul reminds us it is a name above all names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. That Jesus Christ indeed is Lord. So we come into this place on this day, O oh God, to do just that. To proclaim your goodness, to acknowledge your grace and your tender mercies, and to remind ourselves that we are here because of what you did for us a long time ago. So in gratitude, we are present. With thanksgiving, we are present. And with a deep hunger to experience you in richer and deeper ways, we open up ourselves this day. So as we worship you, as we listen to you, and as we listen for you, 
find our worship not only acceptable, oh God, but find it pleasing. May it indeed be a sweet fragrance to you. And as you breathe upon your children once more, may all of us, when all is said and done, know that we know that we know that indeed we have been in the presence of Almighty God. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, saints. I want to welcome you this morning to worship here at St. John's Metropolitan Community Church in the heart of Raleigh, North Carolina. We are blessed and excited that you have taken time out on this Lord's Day as we gather in this place once again to worship our God in spirit and in truth. If you are visiting with us for the first time today, we certainly want to extend to you a very personal welcome and greeting and invite you if you've not had an opportunity to do so to pick up a copy of our welcome and information guide it gives you further information about who we are here in this community of faith and how we believe God is continuing to groom and grow us as we seek to live out our call of proclaiming Christ building community and transforming lives I also hope that you have picked up or you will pick up a copy of our welcome card which is what we use to maintain the statistical data on our members regular tenders and first time guests and so we invite you to complete the information on the front of the card as you feel comfortable if there are messages or prayer requests you'd like to get to us today or this week, you can note that on the back of the card. If you are a member or regular attender, we ask that you place the card in the offering basket during the offertory portion of worship. However, if you're with us for the first time, we want to invite you and encourage you to hold on to your welcome card. If you would meet with Pastor Carlton and Deacon Candidate Laura Gillerin over here to my left after services today, we have a gift for you to let you know how blessed we are that God led you to be with us in worship today. In this community of faith, folk will tell you, I never ever believe that if you're here for the first time, it's by accident, but we believe it is as the result of an appointment, and we call those God's divine appointments with you. And so our prayer today is your heart might be open to everything God has for you, and in turn, your heart and our hearts might be blessed. We welcome you to worship at St. John's. The Sunday news highlights events and activities coming up in our community of faith, as well as some future events that are right around the corner. As I get ready to scroll through the announcements for this morning, I want to ask all the young people, all the children and youth who are in the sanctuary, if you'll come on down front and meet with Pastor Carlton. Come on down, show some love for the kids. Come on, meet with Pastor Carlton. Come on down. Come on, Shug. Come on, there you go. Run and don't miss a beat. Run and don't miss a beat. All right. All right. Come on, don't want to miss nothing. You get to walk with Pastor Carlson. You don't want to miss that. Amen. You don't miss that opportunity. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, on behalf of, of Sandra and myself, certainly on behalf of myself, I want to extend my thanks to all of you for a wonderful pastor's anniversary celebration last weekend. It's a blessing, and, a, and, a, and I love you deeply, and I thank you all for the ways that you continue to show your love to everyone who worked with hospitality, who were not in here doing worship, but actually doing ministry back there. Thank you very much. The food was wonderful, and I'm still working off the calories. Praise the Lord. So thank you so much uh, for all of your love. After this service today in the sanctuary, there will be a meeting for anyone interested in becoming a part of our children's ministry program. You'll be meeting with Pastor Carlton and Rick Grissom here in the sanctuary if you're interested in children's ministry. The blessed Life Bible study continues this afternoon at 2 o'clock. We'll be meeting in the fellowship hall behind me and on Tuesday at 6.30. You can come to one or the other. You do not have to come to both. And I look forward to seeing you this afternoon. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month. We take up two offerings. It's our Change for Change offering. And know that all the proceeds from the Change for Change offering for next month will be used to purchase gifts for an adoptive family for the Christmas holiday. So we invite you to prepare to come and give and to give generously. This coming Saturday, we have two events happening at 9 o'clock in the fellowship hall behind me will be our last membership class for this year. If you're planning to attend, if you want to attend, please call the church office to let us know so we make adequate preparations for lunch, which will be provided for you. Also in this space, Saturday, is it 9 or 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock in this space will be the hanging of the greens. Where we'll be transforming our sanctuary, getting ready for the Advent Christmas season. So we need as many volunteers as possible to make that happen, to beautify our sanctuary. And if you want to be a part of that, if you plan to come, please see Candy Candelario in the back after services today. You have been hearing announcements about our Advent folders. Some of them, some of you have taken them already, and there's still some available as I understand it. We are asking folks to participate in a journey through Advent by actually gifting the Advent folder with $1 a day beginning with this past Friday, November 15th, and that will end on Christmas Eve, Tuesday night, Christmas Eve. We're asking that you then bring the Advent folder on Christmas Eve. If you're not going to be here on Christmas Eve, you can bring it on the Sunday before or the Sunday before that, and all of the proceeds will be used 
use toward our mortgage, and so we want you to give and to give generously, knowing that this is a wonderful way to say Merry Christmas to Christ for all that God has done for us through Christ. December 1st is World AIDS Day around the world. And as we traditionally do in the Raleigh area, there will be several events happening. We will also be participating in the Labyrinth Walk that will be at Millbrook Baptist Church. That will be from 5 to 6 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, December the 1st. We are looking for individuals who are interested in being a part of the reading of the names. You get to read sets of names. And so if you're willing to be a part of that, if you'll see myself or David after services, we need to make final preparations for that event. I would love to see as many of you there as possible. It's a wonderful time just to be in prayer and reflection and meditation, not only in honor and in memory of all of those that we have lost because of the disease, but in honor of those who are living with the disease and in prayer for a cure that we know is going to happen. I believe it's going to happen in my lifetime. And so we're going to continue to pray for that. And so we invite you to be a part of that experience. I hope and I pray that's it for our edition of the Reader's Digest for Sunday. Christmas and Hada on December the 15th, 11 o'clock. Be here. Gotcha. Okay. Well, maybe this will be the sermon. We'll just take up the offering after this. Okay. So, um, winter time is coming. Um, I don't read the farmers. I'm not. Um, my honey picked up one yesterday, and I happened to read it, and I happened to read it for January and February. It's going to be cold, saints. And the first thing that pops into my mind are our homeless brothers and sisters who will be living out in the elements during the season. Because of that, we'll be collecting winter coats. Winter coats that we'll be using to distribute downtown. We ask that you bring those coats to the church. Make sure they're in relatively good condition. Amen. And Okay. Starting next week, bring them in. If you want to bring them during the week, touch base with David. Okay? Amen. All righty. As we prepare to go to our God in prayer today, lots of prayer requests we'll lift up today. Today around the world is the International Transgender Day of Remembrance. And so we want to lift up in memory all of our trans siblings who have had their lives tragically taken away from them, many of them too soon, and those who are daring to live authentically in their truth. To lift up our sister Joyce Robinson, whose father recently passed away, actually suddenly passed away, and she is not with us today, so we we'll lift up Joyce and her family. For Robbie Blanks and his family, his aunt passed away earlier this week, and so as they were prepared to funeralize her, I want to lift up Robbie in prayer. Brown Hollowell and Marlene Perry are senior couple, beautiful couple, who are members of Sacred Journey MCC in Hendersonville, North Carolina. And on last Sunday, on their way home from church, they were in a massive car accident. Um, Brown was hurt and amazingly was able to walk away with just bumps and bruises. Unfortunately, Marlene suffered massive head injuries in the accident and has been on a ventilator since last Sunday. Um, got an email early this morning from Jane, and um, the prognosis is grave. And so this afternoon, members of the church will be going over to visit and to sit with Marlene and Brown. And then on tomorrow, Pastor Jane will be going over and administering last rites, um, at which he will be taken off the ventilator. So we ask that we pray for the saints at Sacred Journey. This is very difficult for them. Um, they have been pillars of that church. And Marlene was a wonderful, wonderful spirit. And pray for Jane. She was close to them. And it'll be a difficult journey for all of them. But we know that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we're thankful for that. For all of those who are dealing with various illnesses during this season, and especially for those who are still trying to grapple with that horrendous typhoon in the Philippines. Um, the loss of life is now up to about 4,000, and they're still looking. Um, so we need to pray for their strength, for their comfort. We need to pray for those who are going over to provide comfort and compassion and care. And to pray for us that we not become callous as a country when tragedy hits. Just because it hits a half a globe away doesn't mean it can't happen here. So we need to pray for all of our brothers and sisters. With that said, I'll invite us now to join in our call to prayer.
Let's pray. Gracious and wonderful God, we gather in this place, Lord, one more time. One more time, God. So, of course, we give thanks to you for waking us up this morning and sending us on our way because you did not have to do that. Thank you, God, for meeting all of our needs. Thank you, God, for allowing us to soar above all of our problems, big and little. Thank you for lifting us out of darkness. And God, we know a lot of us have been in some dark places. But with you, God, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We know that if we just hold on to you, that even through the worst of times, you will let us see light again. We commit ourselves to you, God. Continue to use us at your will, God. As a people, it's hard for us sometimes to realize, once again, that it is not about us. That's hard, God. But in the midst of everything we go through, if we don't get it by now and know that we come out of these things because of you, it's not because of family, although they're there. It's not because of friends, although they are there. God, it's because of you that we can come together as a community of faith and be who we are. We can be who you made us to be, Lord. And we are thankful for that. Because God, going into 2014, we are still faced with many challenges, many challenges in our communities. But we know, God, that you're going to bring us out of that. Some of us may not be here to see it, God, but you will bring us out of this. The prejudice that we go through, the pain, all of these people lined up on these walls, God, in the transgender community, Lord, we ask that you touch their families, God. Comfort them and give them peace, God. God, all the people in the Philippines, all the ill, the depressed, those in recovery, God. Hold on to them, God. God, I ask that you touch Joyce's family. I ask that you touch Robbie's family. Brown and Marlene, whatever your will, God, let it be done. We know that in this life, we have to go through pain and sorrow at times. But in those times, it makes us realize in the happy times that you, again, are there. So let us thank you once again, Lord, for all that you do and what you bring to us. Thank you for all the gifts of life, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are two scripture readings, both of them from the Hebrew Bible. The first one is taken from 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And the second is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 56, verses 1 through 8. Ecclesiastes. There's an opportune time to do things, a right time for everything on the earth, a right time for birth and another for death, a right time to plant and another to reap, a right time to kill and another to heal, a right time to destroy and another to construct, a right time to cry and another to laugh, a right time to lament and another to cheer, a right time to make love and another to abstain, a right time to embrace and another to part, a right time to search and another to count your losses, a right time to hold on and another to let go, a right time to rip out and another to mend, a right time to shut up and another to speak up a right time to love and another to hate, a right time to wage war and another to make peace. From the prophet Isaiah, chapter 56, verses 1 through 3. Both of these are being read from the message. Guard your my common good. Do what's right and do it in the right way. For salvation is just around the corner. My setting things right is about to go into action. How blessed are you who enter into these things, you men and women who embrace them, who keep Sabbath and don't defile it, who watch your step and don't do anything evil. Make sure no outsider who now follows God ever has occasion to say, God put me in second class. I don't really belong. And make sure no physically mutilated person is ever made to think I'm damaged goods. I really don't belong. To the mutilated who keep my Sabbaths and who choose what delights me and keep a firm grip on my covenant, I'll provide them an honored place in my family and within my city, even more honored than that of sons and daughters. I'll confer permanent honors on them that will never be revoked. And as for the outsiders who now follow me, working for me, loving my name, and wanting to be my servants, all who keep Sabbath and don't defile it, holding fast to my covenant, I'll bring them to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. They'll be welcome to worship the same as the insiders, to bring burnt offerings and sacrifices to my altar. Oh yes, my house of worship will be known as a house of prayer for all people. The decree of the master, God, God's self, who gathers in the exiles of Israel, I will gather others also, gather them in, those already scattered. I would lift up for us as a point of reflection <clears throat> this morning. In every season, God is there. In every season, God is there. And if there is a subtitle for today, the subtitle is this. In the eyes of God, we are all valuable. In the eyes of God, we're all valuable. So God, speak to our hearts. Speak to our spirits in a different but a yet a real way this day. We need to hear from you a word of hope. We need to hear from you a word of encouragement. We need to hear from you a word that you're not done with us yet. So speak to us from the inside out. Transform us anew. That in this season in which we find ourselves, 
we might not only embrace our own value, but make it our mission to remind someone else of their value while they're living and amongst us. Speak to us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Our human life, every human life, is precious and sacred. It is sacred in its being born. It is sacred in its living. And it is also sacred in its dying. While this is very true, and I believe it to be true, there are times when our own sense of humanity kicks in and questions arise. What about that human life that is snatched away due to ignorance, prejudice, and sheer hatred? What about the human life that is snuffed out in insanely brutal and cruel ways, including being burned to death? What about the human life that is silenced by torture, dismemberment, and or mutilation? And what about all of the human lives whose seasons seem to end far faster than God ever planned? Her name was Rita Hester. She was an out, proud, vivacious, tall, transgender woman who lived in Boston and in the Boston suburbs and lived for over 10 years as an out, proud, transgender woman. On November 28, 1998, the Saturday after Thanksgiving and 35 years after the assassination of Boston native John F. Kennedy Jr., Hester was found in her Boston home, a victim of multiple stab wounds, wounds that ultimately would take her life. And although her murder remains unsolved to this very moment, her untimely and unexplained death paved the way for the Remember Our Dead project and the very first Transgender Day of Remembrance vigil, which was held in San Francisco in 1999. Since then, Transgender Day of Remembrance is held in each November, on November the 20th this coming Wednesday, we'll be gathering at the Capitol. Oddly enough, and sometimes I don't think it is odd at all, Transgender Day of Remembrance occurs in a month and during a season of the year that focuses so much on death, dying, and birthing. We enter this season with All Saints Day where we remember the great cloud of witnesses that has gone before us, those who have naturally passed on. And then we move into a time where we express our thanksgiving to God for being present with us in the midst of all of life's circumstances in that period of time that we celebrate and we know as thanksgiving. And from that moment, we move into yet another season where we look at the possibilities and are reminded of the possibilities that indeed, once again, something new is about to be born in our midst. We know that season as Advent Christmas. So today... In MCCs, as well as many welcoming and affirming churches in the world, this day is set aside as Transgender Day of Remembrance, a day when the church, as members of the body of Christ, pause to remember the lives that have been lost to transphobia, to reflect upon the sacred worth and value of those lives that were taken often by extremely violent means, and to renew our resolve as the body of Christ and as followers of Christ to create and to build spiritual communities whose doors are open to everyone, where every person is ensured a safe and sacred environment in which he or she can both be and become, and where all persons who are dedicated to establishing a hate-free, prejudice-free, phobia-free, and ism-free society is welcomed and embraced. Today, we find ourselves in this space surrounded by 46 names, some known, some unknown, 
As of Thursday, there were only 45 names. And when I got home on Friday, I was informed that there was another death that took place last Sunday evening in the south side of Richmond, where Amari, who's right here, was shot multiple times, including a gunshot to the growing and left to bleed to death. What touched me about this one is that he was killed on the day we celebrated Pastor's anniversary. Forty-six. Some known, some unknown. There's even an unknown child over there. Most of which were murdered because they were trans-identified men and women. Some were murdered because they were associated with people of trans experience. All of the murders, hideous and heinous in every sense of the word. The sad thing is I hold in my hand a list of over 260 trans-identified folk who have been murdered since November 20th of last year. And this list is only complete through the month of October. Nine killed in November of last year, 19 killed in December, 21 killed in January, 16 in February, 10 in March, 9 in April, 18 in May, 16 in June, 29 in July, 19 in August, 23 in September, and 15 in October. silenced for simply daring to be real. As I put these placards up and as I posted them, I was really intentional about reading the names and reading the stories. I hope if you haven't had a chance to do so that you will do so. Fernando. I am Fernando from Brazil. I was beaten to death and died from multiple blows to the head and my body was burned. I died on November 21st, 2012, the day after Transgender Day of Remembrance. I am Evan from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was tied up beaten with fists and other objects, choked with a chain, had a bag taped over my head, shot, set on fire, and discarded in a dumpster. I was 21 years old. I'm Tiffany from Georgetown, Guyana. I received multiple stab wounds and died on January 11th, 2013. I was only 19 years old. So I read them, and as I read them, my heart became heavier and heavier. So by the time I got to this side of the sanctuary, it was at the point where I almost couldn't breathe. To Dominique from Fontana, California, I was stabbed to death on August the 20th. I was 31 years old. An unidentified woman. I am an unidentified woman from Brazil. I died from severe head injuries and my body was thrown under a truck. I am Paula from Brazil. I was stoned to death. I died on August the 24th. And I got here. And the only thing that it says is unreported and unrecognized. Every year, hundreds of murders go unreported or unrecognized due to inadequate hate crimes legislation. I have to admit, by the time I got there, I was somewhat angry. Your humanness kicks in after a while. 
you know, as I was putting the last piece of tape on that placard, I heard this voice. And the voice said, look around the room. Look carefully around the room and all of the placards that you have placed up. Yes, who these brothers and sisters are, that's important. The manner in which their lives were stolen without my permission is important. The fact that many of them were killed in ways that made it impossible for anyone to recognize them is important. But look at the dates. So I stopped. And I walk through the dates again. And it's interesting sometimes how God can remind you in very gentle ways of how God is ever present. You see, these placards are reflections of the seasons of God. In the winter, in the spring, in the fall, in the summer, these murders took place. And I believe in that moment, if there was nothing else I needed to hear, what I needed to hear was even as they took their last breath, God was present with them. For it is the prophet Isaiah who says, for those whose flesh is mutilated, to them I will give a name that is greater than sons or daughters. In their particular season, God was there. In their particular season, they were reminded as we should be reminded that they and we are all of value. That's what the wisdom writer is talking about in the third chapter of Ecclesiastes. God has a specific outline, a specific season for every manner under heaven, every experience under heaven. And this is by God's divine providence, not of our own making. We know about the season of spring when we experience and encounter the newness of God's natural creation. We know the experiences in the seasons of summer where we observe the growth of God's natural creation as well as an increased level of productivity from God's human creation. We know about the season of fall, that season when the harvest is at the forefront of the minds of most farmers. It is that time of the year when we begin to see the leaves fall, the flowers lose their blooms, and we begin to see a change, not only in the natural order, but in ourselves as well. And then there's a season of winter, the season that is usually a time of just being still a time of reflection and remembrance, a time of cleansing and a time of closure. It is a time of peace and a time of preparation, or at least it should be. So on this day, when we remember those who have gone before us, I believe that their names scrolling behind my back. As we remember them, I want to remind all of us, as I reminded those at the 845 service, we are they. We are they. We are they. And it is in Ecclesiastes where we read, at least by Eugene Peterson's interpretation, there's a time to shut up and there's a time to speak up. And where there is injustice, where there are indignities, where lives are taken unnecessarily as a result of hate, as a result of ignorance, or as a result of religious fanaticism, it is time to speak up and to say enough is enough. This, I believe, is the season for the church to say enough is enough. That we will commit ourselves in this season to learn all we can about men and women of trans experience because we are they. That we will dedicate ourselves to learn about gay male culture because we are they that we will dedicate ourselves to learn about lesbian culture because we are they. That we will dedicate ourselves to learn about what it 
truly means to live authentically and proudly as a bisexual without apology or without shame. And yes, to understand our heterosexual brothers and sisters, how they in their fullness celebrate all, who, all of who they are, even in our midst. It's our mission to understand, not to criticize. It's our mission to help others understand, not to drag them along, but to lead them along. It is our time, this is our season, to say enough is enough. I want to be a part of a revolution that's not only going to change lives, but it's going to save lives. I want to be a part of a revolution that's going to speak truth to power. I want to be a part of a revolution that will not allow moments like this to ever happen again. And I will do whatever I need to do to make sure that I am properly equipped and properly tooled to be the living witness of hope, to be the living witness of justice, to be the living witness of unconditional love. This is our season. This is going to come across as very unorthodox to you. And as you're able, I'm going to invite you as you're able to rise. As you're able. And I've done this before, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to ask you to take off your shoes as you're able. If you got 14 laces, take your time. The Bible says, in all you're getting, get you understanding. And this is a teachable moment. Now what I want you to do is I want you to put the shoes on the opposite feet. Now, if it don't fit, that's another issue. Put your shoes on opposite. My, my aunt's trying to do it, so I know we can get it. Shoes on opposite feet. And I, if you, as you're able, I want you to stand with them on the opposite feet. Is it comfortable yet? Does it feel awkward? Does it feel odd? What's the teachable moment? If you, and I would do this, but in the interest of time, I won't. You are standing in the shoes that most trans people stand in before they come out of the closet. You see what's on the inside, your feet, they are, they, are, they, are, they are right. They're in the right direction. They're the right size. But somewhere on the outside, something ain't fitting. Something's not connecting, and it's painful. Every time you take a step, you're reminded that your inside is not congruent with your outside. And then you take another step, and you realize that you got a bunion you didn't think you had. And the more you ignore it, the more painful it becomes. The more you ignore it, it runs the risk of becoming infected. The more you ignore it, you run the risk of losing your life. I offer this to you simply for this reason. We are surrounded in this area by trans siblings everywhere. Some are out, many are not. And whether they're out or whether they're not, the understanding that we must have is we are all valuable in the eyes of God. And this is the season where we invite our trans-identified brothers and sisters to come out of those wrong shoes and put them on right. Jesus. That we invite them not to live in a place of discomfort anymore. That we not allow them to stay in a place that really is darkness, as Jane talked about, and invite them to come back into God's marvelous light that we are the ones, that we understand that we are the ones who are called to hold up that light. And to say, we, we know it's not going to always be easy. We know there's going to be sacrifices along the way. 
We know that somebody is going to lose their life every now and then along the way. But if it's something I can do to help somebody change their shoes and put them on right and give them an opportunity to live a season in the fullness of who they are, that's the greatest gift you can give to anyone. I know I got you standing a long time in those shoes. I stood in those shoes for 50, 25 years. I've walked in them. And I also know how good it feels to have my shoes on right. This is a different sermon. You, you can sit down and change your shoes. I know it's uncomfortable. I know y'all said thank you, Jesus, on that. I realize that this is a very different sermon from what I normally preach, but this is a teachable moment this weekend. There is much that we are called to accomplish and do, and I am convinced, even as I put these up last night, that we have to understand this is our season, this is our time, and God is calling us forth to get up off the pews, to find our calling from God, to find that place of ministry where God wants us to invest and immerse ourselves. And to say, if you can use anybody, God, I know you can use me. And I'm ready. I'm ready. For all of these saints, Are you willing to help someone put on their shoes right? For all of these saints, are you willing to help somebody put their shoes on right? And for all of our lesbian, gay, and bisexual brothers and sisters who still don't think that they are valuable in the eyes of God, will you help them put their shoes on right? This is our season. This is our call. And we're in the fall, getting ready to go into winter. And winter is that time where we're invited to be still and reflect and meditate. That's the preparation time. So that when spring comes, we're ready to be farmers and reapers. We're ready to be light and love, we are ready to be Jesus with skin on. In every season, God was there. And I suspect by the end of this day, somebody else will be added. It's time to speak up. It's time to speak up because we know of a more excellent way and that's about loving people into wholeness and releasing them to be all God has called them to be. In God's eyes, in God's eyes, we are all valuable for our human life is holy for it comes from God and it returns to God. Our human life is holy in its becoming. Our human life is holy in its living. And our human life is holy in its diving. Our human life is holy because it's God's gift to the world, even if it's only for a little while. in the rising of the sun and it's going down, we will remember you. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of the winter, we will remember you. In the opening buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember you. 
in the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we will remember you. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember you. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember you. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember you. When we are lost and are sick at heart, we will remember you. When we have joys, we yearn to share, we will remember you. So long as we live, you shall live too. For you all are a part of us. And in this season and every season thereafter, we will remember you. Amen. In your bulletin, beginning on page four, So litany of remembrance. That I'm going to invite you to join with me in. We light this candle of remembrance this day. In memory of all of those whose lives have been taken away because of trans violence. We light this light as a reminder that though they are gone, their light has been passed on to us. And now our lights are called to shine brighter and brighter and brighter. We praise you, Holy One, for the gift of life, precious, stubborn, fragile, and beautiful. We are grateful for the time we have had to live upon the earth, to love, to grow, to, and to be. And for those who have been taken by the devastation of violence used against them, we remember them and claim the opportunity to build lives of wholeness in their honor. For the diligent science, brilliant ideas, and insights that have led to new life-giving procedures for those in leadership who have acted to provide health care for people who are in transition. We praise you, Eternal One for those who have loved enough that their hearts have broken, who cherish the memories of those we have lost, and for those who console the grieving. Inspire us to challenge and stand against the forces that allow the needless harm and violence to continue prejudice, unjust laws, repression, stigma, and fear. We lift up to you our dreams of a world where all are cared for. Our dreams of a world where all are accepted and respected.
every week we provide an opportunity for anyone who may have heard the voice or the spirit of God speaking to them in a different way. And that voice could have been a voice that simply said, you know, I've been waiting for you to come home. Why don't you do it today? Well, the door has always been open. You can always come back in. And there are many ways that individuals come back home to God. One of the ways that folks have experienced that in the Christian tradition is through baptism. It's an outward manifestation of an inward transformation. A journey that you and God take with each other. So we make this available to you. I wonder how many of the 46 were trying to find their way back home. There may be others here who have particular burdens weighing upon him or her, burdens of the heart, mind, soul, spirit. If that's the case, we offer to and for you or for anointing that God might meet you where you are and lead you into a deeper understanding of God's desire for you and for your life. We have folk up here who are willing to pray with you, for you, trusting God to do the work in you that only God can do, whatever the need is. We invite you to come. We invite you to respond as a spirit invites you to.
Good afternoon. Okay. All right. I just got to speak up, right? Speak into the mic. <clears throat> What's your story? Oh, we could go many places from there, couldn't we? But specifically, what's your story with regards to your first fruits and bringing them to God? Do you have a story? I have one. Let me share mine with you for a couple of minutes. Indulge me. You've heard Pastor talk many times about growing up in a church environment where people tithe and your parents or your mother put money in your hand and said, okay, this goes in the offering plate. Not to go back home with you to buy candy, but in the offering plate. She'd put a dollar or a quarter or whatever it was in my hand, and it better go in an offering plate. So I grew up in that Disciples of Christ, Baptist, Church of Christ tradition thing. And so I saw tithing being done. And I saw my mom writing on the envelope, you know, X number of dollars or whatever it was per week, and she'd put it in. All right, so I grew up around it. So when I started working and making my own money, I'm like, okay, well, I need to put something in the church. But I was approaching it from the standpoint of this is M-I-N-E, mine, okay? And I'm going to put something in the basket when it comes by because that's how I was raised, to put something in the basket. <clears throat> As I grew older, Thank God I grew a little smarter. Took a while, but I kind of got to the point where, okay, well, um, maybe I should give a little more. So I got to the point of giving some more, to the point where I felt good about what I was giving. And I'd put something from what I had in my pocket, and if it was a 10 or a 20, oh, man, I was doing it then. God, I'm doing you a favor. I, you know, I appreciate all the cross and sacrifice of your son and saving of my soul and everything else you did, but I'm going to give, you know, what I want to give. Besides, I got cable bills to pay. I got my cell phone to pay for. I've got my car payment to pay for. Gas is high. Plus, I want to go to D.C. next week and hang out at the mill. And in, and in, and in, two, in two months, we're going to do pride down in Atlanta, and I know that it's going to be off the chain, so, you know, i got to do all that. So I was still acting as it was mine, M-I-N-E. I earned it. I go to the, to the job every day from 8 to 5. My blood, sweat, and tears, it is mine, but I'm going to give you a little bit. Do you a favor. Well, that didn't work out very well for me, quite honestly, because the more, and I'm glad you asked, the more I held on to it, the harder it got. And I'm like, wait a minute, where is all this going? What is going on here? Eventually, as I finally decided or finally understood, maybe decide is not the right word, I was finally educated. And I came to the understanding that tithing was all about bringing back to God what was already God's. It wasn't mine. God gave it to me. All I had to do was to bring back my first fruits to him because it was already his. And if I wasn't bringing it back to him and I was keeping it for myself, then what was there for him to bless? I mean, does that not make sense? It finally began to make sense. But it took me a while to get there. I started the journey. I set up a budget. I put tithing for what I thought I could afford at the top of it. But I worked toward trying to bring the full tithe into God's storehouse. That was my path. And I want to tell you, that as I've gone down that path and gotten closer to being, being able to do that, God blessed it. He blessed my finances. He blessed me financially. 
And this story is not about me and my story. This is about understanding and us believing that God can bless your finances today in the here and now. This is not an abstract concept. First fruits is not something in the air that floats around and you can't get your hands on it. If you understand, if we understand that what we have is given to us from God and set our mind on the right path to get to that point, he will bless you. Remember a couple of weeks ago, pastor said, pastor said God invites us to test him. Pastor, did you not say that? Did you? Did you test him? I want you to know, I tested him on something. I tested him. And I tell you no lie, the very next day, no, money didn't fall from heaven. I didn't win the lottery. But the very next day, he covered the test. All I could do was laugh and cry at the same time. I just laughed and cried. I didn't know what else to do. He covered the test the next day. Again, everyone, I say this. I share my story with you because it is important for us to understand this is about the here and now. And you may say, well, you know, Al's on the stewardship team, and Al talks to pastor a lot, and I don't know if I believe all that or not. Okay, that's fine. So what we want to do, we invite you to share your story of financial blessing through your first fruits, December 8th. Pastors asked me to deliver the message. I don't need to preach. I can't. I'm not a preacher. <laughs> Pastor, don't, don't take. I, I'm not a preacher. But we are all ministers, not only outside this, these walls. We are ministers to each other. We are called to minister. So you have ministries or testimonies to share. So on December 8th, I want you to come prepared to share your testimony around the blessings of your first fruits that you've given or brought back to God. Yes, we could have testimony, uh, 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 testimony um, sessions around lots of other stuff, spiritual, physical, social, family. This one is going to be focused on first fruits. So come prepared to share your testimony, two to three minutes, and we're going to cover as many people as we can. Because if you don't believe it coming from me, maybe you'll believe it coming from 10, 15, 20 of the people who sit around you. This is about the here and the now. He has the power to do it. He calls us to test him.
loving God, we thank you again for a beautiful day. And we thank you for blessing us over and over again so abundantly. And now, God, we wish to give back to you a small portion of what you have so freely given to us, God, through our gifts of offerings, tithes, time, and talent. We pray that you will take these gifts and multiply them so that we can further the knowledge of your love out onto the world, God, so we can do your work and your will, so we can be Jesus with skin on better and better and better. In Christ's name, amen. My brothers and sisters, in Metropolitan Community Churches, we affirm, celebrate, and offer an open communion. For when Jesus sat at the table and broke bread with those who were rejected and alienated by the society in which they lived, Jesus proclaimed that God's care and love knows no bounds. So on this day, all are invited to come, just as you are, to share at God's table and be nourished by the bread of life. This table is open and prepared for you. On the night that he was to be handed over to suffering and death, Jesus, during a meal in the upper room, took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant, sealed in my blood, which is shed for you and for the world for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask once more for you to pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. By your presence, make sacred this feast that they may become for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith that Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ is here, Christ will come again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You are invited as the ushers direct to receive the gifts of bread and fruit of the vine from one of the communion servers, followed by a prayer of blessing. If you would like to receive communion without a prayer of blessing, you may do so at the station on my far right. We request that you observe the sacredness of this time as others receive the Holy Eucharist through song, prayer, and meditation. Let us all come together now and let's celebrate the feast.
grace. We give you thanks once more for this holy yes, mystery God. you have provided for us through the fruit of the vine and the wheat of the field. Thank you for renewing us at your table by the presence of the Christ. Thank you for the bread of life that sustains all creation. As we prepare to leave this place, may your love continue to surround us and inspire us to live more fully for you, that we might rejoice as your servants to the world. This we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Rise to rise as we are able. Tonight at 9 o'clock online, there will be an international Transgender Day of Remembrance. If you are available and would like to see that, you would go to TDOR Unite. TDOR Unite. 9 o'clock tonight. It's going to be broadcast around the world. So around the world, so I invite you to be a part of that if you have time. This coming Wednesday, downtown at the state capitol, we'll be gathering at 6 o'clock for the Transgender Day of Remembrance. So if you have time on Wednesday, if you want to come down to the state capitol and be with us as we come together to remember our siblings, as well as to renew our commitment to be the look in the face of justice um, for all of those who live on the margins of society. And I forgot about this and should have mentioned it earlier today. It's either going to be tomorrow or on Tuesday. Um, many, uh, many Voices campaign. How many of you are familiar with Many Voices campaign? Anybody? Many Voices video campaigns actually is a campaign that's being done here in the state of North Carolina to begin to facilitate and create opportunities between the LBGTQI community, peoples of color, and the black church. And so there were a series of six videos that were taken. Mine was the last one. And it's supposed to be released either today or tomorrow or Tuesday, just prior to Transgender Day of Remembrance. So you go to that, it's many voices, manyvoicescampaign.org. All the videos are there, and so my the interview will be on Wednesday. So if you want to see somebody try to look pretty, go and try to find me. Uh, <laughs> um, and pray for the project. We're getting some great response from that, and, yeah, particularly from the black churches, so that's a good thing, so pray for the project. You, yes. Wednesday, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, downtown. Okay? So meet us downtown. Know this, we are all valuable. All of us cherished and valued in the eyes of our God. Yes. And there are many people out there who are still walking with their shoes on the wrong feet. It's incumbent upon us to let them know you got your shoes on the wrong feet. And we want to invite you to put your shoes on the right feet and to walk proudly, to walk unashamed, to walk as the child of God yes. you are. Be that light wherever God leads you. Be the face of hope. Be the face of justice. Speak truth to power. Speak and do not be silent. And wherever you go, I tell you this all the time, you may be the very last Bible somebody reads. You may be the very last Bible somebody reads. You may be the very last Bible somebody reads. Remember that. Allow these words to go with you. Celebrate them, embrace them, and live them out. I am, I am God's beloved, God's beloved deeply, loved, deeply loved, richly gifted, richly highly, gifted favored, highly favored, abundantly, abundantly blessed. blessed. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are, you are God's beloved, God's beloved deeply, loved, deeply loved, richly gifted, richly highly gifted, favored, highly abundantly, blessed. abundantly blessed. We are, we are God's beloved, God's beloved deeply loved, deeply loved richly, richly gifted, Highly favored, abundantly blessed. Embrace the promise and go in peace as we sing together. Victory is mine.
today. 